Okay, so this, I did this presentation back here in November 2018. I kind of dusted it off. It's not polished. I'm a little bit rusty on it, so uh, you have to bear with me. I may not explain things properly, but uh, my goal is to hurt your brain at the end of the evening. So I'm going to damage a few brains here. So that, this is that's about. What I wanted Eric to go last. <laughs> Yeah, so side, yeah, that, that way the brains get uh, relaxed, right? Yeah, this is about sideband inversion. And uh, now this is a phenomenon you have to deal with if you're going to be building your own super head radio. If you're building a kit or you got a commercial radio, the, um, the manufacturer of that or the developer of that has taken that into account. So you don't have to worry about sideband version. So this is only happening if you're basically homebrewing your own um, uh, transceiver. So how did I get down this rabbit hole? Well, back in 2018, started building uh, the Pete Giuliano uh, sudden transceiver, which was based on two SA612s with a bunch of relays to switch between them, Arduino Nano running NSI 5351 and a nine megahertz uh, IF. And uh, he used the nine megahertz IF because he got, I think, the um, uh, the crystal filter from uh, R uh, RGSB or RSGB uh, uh, club. They they sell the nine megahertz crystal fil filters. So uh, that was taken. It was modified. I modified that design for a multiband and for a 12 megahertz IF. So if I had built Pete Giuliano's original design, sideband version would have been taken care of because I'd be running his code and his code takes care of all that stuff and I don't have to worry about it. I just build it, plug it in and it works. But because I went playing around, I changed it. I have to worry about this or I learned about sideband inversion the hard way. So here's the, the original board I developed. This was the, I started with a nine megahertz version, uh, IF version, then I had to switch it to, to 12 because nine wasn't, uh, didn't suit a multiband uh, operation. So uh, there's the uh, RF amplifier coming in from the antenna. Here's the antenna port, right? That's the RF amplifier. There's the, ba um, the uh, bandpass filter. There's the first SA612. Uh, here's the crystal filter, second SA612. And there's the, the audio amplifier. And here's the LO uh, feeding in to drive the first mixer. And here's the BFO feeding in to drive the second mixer. So this sideband inversion. Sometimes you'll see um, uh, some people refer to as a spectrum inversion. It's basically when you swap lower sideband and upper sideband. So your uh, radio may be, you think it's putting out lower sideband, but it's putting out upper sideband. Or you think you're receiving lower sideband, but you're receiving upper sideband. And it all depends on how the mixing is done. And it has to do with something called high side injection. injection. And that happens when your local oscillator is higher than the incoming uh, radio fre frequency. So if your LO is higher than the RF, or if your IF is lower than uh, the, the LO, and you, you have to subtract the RF from the LO, by subtracting the RF, you're inverting that uh, lower sideband uh, to upper sideband or upper sideband to, to lower sideband. And here's a couple of quotes about um, uh, sideband inversion. And here's what Wikipedia has to say about it. They're echoing exactly what I said, and they give uh, an example here of RF coming in. And here's your BFO. You have to, you know, to try and get a 200 hertz uh, audio signal coming in. And if you uh, feed in the, use the wrong BFO, you end up getting uh, uh, the opposite spectrum. You get the inverted spec spectrum. You get that spectrum inversion. So let's, um, before I get into this, let's make sure we all kind of understand uh, level set, um, some of the, 
the terminology. So I've got back to basics here. So this is a super head receiver. I've got the definition of what a super head receiver is. I think everyone's f familiar with this. Basically, you've got your antenna, you've got RF coming in. You may have some amplifier here. I didn't bother putting in amplifiers. I'm just dealing with the intermediate stage, right? There's no IF amp amplifiers, anything like that. It just We're just looking at this from a 50,000 foot level. So we've got some RF coming in from, from an antenna. It's coming into a mixer. You've got a local oscillator. You're gonna mix that to generate an IF. That's going to put it through some kind of a bandwidth filter where you're going to uh, filter that signal for selectivity. You don't want to get the the um, the CW signal or the uh, sideband signal that's three kilohertz away or six kilohertz away. You, you want to make sure that you're only listening to the sideband uh, signal that you've selected. So once you've selected that, you pump it through to the next mixer, you feed it with a BFO. I think BFO is used more so in the terminology for C CW, but I think it's used for uh, sideband as well. So I'm just going to use the term BFO, a beat frequency os oscillator. So you've got your IF, you're going to feed in a BFO, and you're going to down convert that to audio, and that goes to your, to your audio amp, and you get... Uh, uh, you get audio coming out. Magic happens. Same thing in a transmitter. Very similar. You've got audio coming in. And you're going to introduce some kind of a carrier. Okay. And you're going to modulate that carrier. You're going to mix. Basically, you're mixing the carrier with the audio signal. And you're going to get an IF, which is typically in the RF frequency range. Then you're going to use a filter. And you're going to suppress your carrier and you're gonna suppress the unwanted sideband in that. So what's coming out of this filter is gonna be the sideband you wanna transmit. So then that uh, gets to a second mixer. You're gonna have another, uh, uh, you're gonna have a local oscillator, some oscillator here that's gonna lift that signal up or move that signal to the desired RF frequency you want, whether it's 40 or, or 20 or 10 or, 80 meter, and then that goes out to the, the antenna. Now, again, I'm, I'm not showing any amp, amp, amplifiers here. There's no power amplifier. There's no IF amplifiers here. So uh, I'm just showing this again from a 50,000 foot level. So mixing. So we're all clear. Let me just, just uh, um, I guess, go over what a mixer does. I think we all uh, uh, understand this. So you've got a f input frequency, you've got an oscillator frequency going into your oscillator, and you've got an output frequency coming out. The output frequency is a combination of all harmonics of your input signal mixing with all harmonics of the oscillator signal. And your output is going to be a combination of every single combination mixing together. So where M and N is the harmonic number for your uh, oscillator and for your uh, input frequency, you're going to get various combinations. And basically, you get the sum and difference. You're going to take the difference between the two, and you're going to take the sum of the two, and that's what comes out. And you're going to do that for each and every harmonic. So. To make this easy, let's just assume we're dealing with fundamental frequencies. We're dealing with pure sine waves. There's no harmonics. So M and N are one. So if M and N are one, then the output frequency is going to be the difference between the oscillator and the input frequency. And it's going to be the sum of the frequency, the oscillator frequency and the, uh, uh, the input frequency. So as I go through here now, I'm going to be working, I'll be talking in the frequency domain. So I'll be showing diagrams like this, and I think we're all familiar with this. You know, frequency is running along this axis, so this is low frequency, this is high frequency, and each one of these arrows is representing one unique frequency, and the, the length of the arrow is how strong it is. So here, for example, this is showing three uh, different frequencies. So this is in the frequency domain. 
we're looking at this in the frequency domain. This is what we would see on a spectrum analyzer. Now, if I was to go and work in the time domain, I'd have to use an oscilloscope. And if I had three frequencies uh, together, all I would see is gibberish on the oscilloscope. So it's you have to use a spectrum analyzer to resolve the frequency. So I will be showing diagrams like this. So I just want to make sure, make it clear that I've level set what the terminology here is. So how do we generate a sideband? Um, so we've got uh, we've got audio coming from a microphone. It's coming into a mixer or modulator, whatever you want to call it. But basically, just mixing the audio with a carrier or some sort of a RF frequency. Uh, you know, usually uh, I think most people say carrier. You're going to modulate it on a carrier. So now from mixing, you're going to get the sum and you're going to get the difference. So it's going to be the sum, the uh, if, it, if I'm going to call it FRF, uh, plus uh, the audio, or the carrier plus the audio, and that's going to be my, my upper sideband. So if this is my carrier, FC plus FA is going to be the upper sideband is going to appear here. Now this is for, like for example, one pure tone, like a 1500 hertz tone. So you get just one spike here, you get the carrier. And uh, if you do the uh, difference of the two frequencies, the audio and the uh, uh, RF for a carrier, you subtract the two, then you get lower sideband and you get lower sideband. Now, both of these are identical. There, there's no difference to them. The, the signal is identical, it's just shifted in frequency. One is above the carrier and the other one is below the carrier. One is the mirror image of the other. They're just the distance from here, from the carrier to the, the upper sideband and the distance from the uh, carrier to the lower sideband is the same. They, they're both separated by 1500 Hertz for, for an example. Uh, Dave, Dave, yeah. quick question. Uh, which one is it? Are they identical or are they mirror images? They're, they're, mirror, they're, they're mirror images, but they are identical. From, from a perspective of a single tone, they are identical. Oh, okay. For a single, a tone, single they tone, are. Got it. Yeah, okay. they, are, they are identical. Okay? Yep, thanks. So, so now, Hassan, I'm coming to what you were getting at. You're a little bit ahead of me. Okay, so now we're not dealing with a single tone. We're dealing with a spectrum of frequencies. So let's just say my microphone is generating this spectrum of frequencies here. Okay, now this becomes my, my, my audio spectrum. So throughout the presentation, this big hump here is going to represent the higher frequencies audio. So say three kilohertz. And down at the bottom here, this, this fatter section here is going to be the low frequency, say, say 100 hertz. So that's the audio coming in. That's your voice coming in. And you're going to have a low frequency component and a high frequency component. So we have the audio frequency coming in. It's getting mixed with the carrier. So now this is what Hassan was, was getting at. So we get the low frequency is always closer to the carrier. Okay, it's always closest to the carrier. In FC plus FA, the low frequency is going to be close to the carrier and the higher frequency is going to be further away from, from the carrier. It's going to be in a higher frequency. It's going to be a higher RF frequency. Okay, however, lower sideband, the opposite happens. The low frequency has to be closer to the carrier because the difference it's low frequency, so the difference here is small. So it has to be closer to the carrier and the higher frequencies further from the carrier. So if you look at these, they're mirror images. It's the same signal, but they're just mirror images of one another. Okay, this is really, really important because this is what leads to sideband inversion. Okay, so... Um, you, you get uh, a mirror image of the uh, signals. So 
let's just say this is going out on your, your antenna. You've got a USB signal. It's the FC plus FA component. Now, FC is, is suppressed, but throughout this, I'm going to always use FC plus FA to symbolize it's the upper sideband version. That uh, this frequency here at the low edge is going to be the carrier frequency plus whatever audio frequency uh, this starts at. But the carrier is suppressed here, right? There's no carrier here. We're just getting the sideband, and this is being transmitted across the air. So in, in, in our receiver, when we get this, when we mix our, our LO, we can either do a low side injection where we mix a LO that's lower in frequency to the carrier, to where the carrier was or carrier is supposed to be, or it's on the higher side. It's a high side injection, it's on the higher side. Now, Sideband inversion, remember my definition, I said, if the LO that you're mixing is greater than the frequency coming in and you're doing a subtraction. So if you use this LO, which is higher, and you're doing a subtraction, this spectrum gets inverted. So let's, let's break it down. Let's go a little bit deeper. That's from a high level. If that's all, if, if you got that, you don't, care about, you know, getting into a little bit more than nuts and bolts, then, you know, turn off, uh, put on YouTube and watch uh, a, a cat video. So let's get a little bit deeper into this. So we're going to generate the, the uh, IF here. So um, we have RF coming in and we've got our, our LO here and we've got an IF coming out. So if we mix the RF and uh, the LO together, you'll get the sum and you'll get the difference, okay? Now, remember I said sideband version is only when the LO is higher. So here's my here's my RF, the yellow. My RF is here. My LO is at a higher frequency. So now if I subtract FLO from FRF, my IF frequency is gonna be lower. It's gonna be somewhere below the LO frequency, right? And then the sum of them is going to be higher than the FLO, and that's your, your image. That's your unwanted image. So if you subtract it in this situation, if you subtract it, then you get sideband inversion. So I'm going to do a little bit, uh, so some hocus pocus, do a little bit of math here. I'm going to kind of prove this uh, mathematically, you know, don't, Hassan, don't, <laughs> don't be too hard on this. It's not accurate, but I think it's good enough for the, for illustration purposes. So here, if you go back to slide nine, if we go back to slide nine here. Remember I said the modulated signal, we've got audio coming in, the modulated signal here is going to be the carrier plus FA for upper side band. And it's going to be the carrier minus FA for lower sideband, right? So with that in mind, uh, where am I? Here. So I'm here. So this is, I'm just restating what I said before. So I'm feeding in a modulated signal into a mixer. So let's just say that's the RF from the, an the antenna. So that's got the carrier plus the, uh, the audio or the carrier minus uh, the audio for upper or lower sideband. I'm going to feed in a, um, a, a an oscillator. Uh, I'm going to have a frequency of my uh, local oscillator feeding in here, and then I'm going to have an IF frequency coming out. So we would get the sum and difference. We get FLO plus IF is going to be FMD plus FLO, or it's going to be FLO minus FMD. It's the sum and difference. But as I said, uh, it only happens with subtraction, if you're doing subtraction. So let's forget about the plus, um, oops, let's forget about the plus um, component. Let's focus on the minus mixing component. So in this case, your IF is going to be FLO plus uh, F or minus FMD, but we have two cases. We've got upper sideband, we've got lower sideband. 
So it's going to be minus, for in the case of upper side band, it's going to be FC plus FA. And for lower side band, it's going to be FC minus FA. Now, if we expand it out, we'll get FLO minus FC minus FA. Remember the top one, this was USB, right? That was upper side band. And we get FLO minus FC plus FA. If we just expand this out, no hocus pocus here, simple math. Uh, this was lower sideband. But now let's make, let's say the IF is FLO minus FC. So we're going to make this the IF frequency. So now we've got one of the frequencies coming out of here, one of the IF frequencies coming out is going to be the IF frequency minus FA, and it's going to be plus FA. Look at what happens. Because you've got minus FA, this is now lower sideband but it was upper sideband. And you've now got plus FA. This now is upper sideband, but it was lower sideband. You've just swapped your sidebands around. This is called sideband inversion, right? So now you've got here, the plus is your upper sideband. It's here, but this was lower sideband. And here you've got your lower sideband, but it used to be upper sideband. So you've just inverted them. You just swapped them around. Okay, here's another alternative view if you can't visualize that. So let's just assume we've got this USB signal coming in. That's our modulated signal. And we've got an LO frequency uh, uh, coming into the mixer. And we've got an IF frequency. Now remember, this side's the low frequency and that side's the high frequency. So let's assign some numbers. The low frequency side, let's say it's 10, and let's say the high frequency is 20. Kilohertz, megahertz, bananas, dogs, cats, pigs, chickens. So we've got 10 chickens here and 20 chickens here. The, the, uh, the LO is 100 chickens, right? So the LO is higher than these, so we're doing a subtraction. So if you subtract that, so 100 minus 10 becomes 90. So this side now becomes 90, and 100 minus 20 becomes 80. This becomes here. So all of a sudden, we've done a mirror image. We've swapped it. We've inverted upper sideband to become lower sideband. Because remember, lower sideband is the mirror image of, upper, of, the, uh, of the upper sideband. It's the mirror image, right? If we look at it, it's the mirror image. Okay, so now, how do we address this? If you're designing a radio, uh, how do you address this? So, uh, so in, in the uh, transmitter, so, you know, again, you know, you've got your upper sideband, lower sideband. Here's your, your upper sideband, lower sideband. When you transmit your radio, you got to make sure the radio is transmitting upper sideband. When you set upper sideband your radio and you key that mic, you want upper sideband coming out. You don't want lower sideband coming out or vice versa. That really mess things up. It'll piss off a lot of people. So um, if you look at your uh, transmitter, um, we've got our audio coming in. We've got our carrier. We're going to mix it. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to use our filter here to filter one of these sidebands, either the lower uh, the lower sideband or the upper sideband, and we're going to filter out uh, the other sideband. So we need to shift the carrier. We need to shift the carrier such that the middle of this frequency is going to be right in the middle of this uh, spectrum here to only allow that spectrum to, to propagate. Okay, so basically, this is kind of reiterating what I just said. You, you know, if your pass band is, say, 4.914506 hertz, that's, that's the center frequency. Your carrier, you're going to want to have the carrier shifted down about 1,500 hertz. If this is 300 kilohertz, 3, 3 kilohertz wide, you're going to want to shift this down 1,500 kilohertz so that, you know, the carrier is now at the bottom of this 
of your pass band here, and it's going to only filter that out, right? So that's all fine and good. However, that's all fine and good here. So we're going to feed into our filter, either upper sideband or lower sideband. Then we're going to have a mixer, and that's going to have a local oscillator that's going to bring it up to radio frequency that's going to go out the antenna, say 40 meters, 7.1 megahertz. It's going to lift that IF up to 7.1 megahertz, and that goes, goes out the, the antenna. If you're doing high side injection here, that is the LOs higher than your IF, this means this mixer is going to invert the spectrum. If lower side bands coming in here, upper side bands going to come out. So coming back to what I said about you got to know the radio has got to transmit what it's supposed to transmit. In the case where this is going to do a side band inversion, you're going to want to feed in the opposite side band into your filter, right? You're going to want, for example, if you want to transmit upper sideband, you want to feed in lower sideband into the filter so it gets inverted and you get upper sideband coming out. Okay, and uh, in, in the receive chain, so in the receiver. So same thing, we've got our handy dandy receiver again. We've got RF, we've got our LO, we mix it, we get an IF. And we got a filter, which we're going to filter out for selectivity. We're going to, we don't want to get a neighboring sideband conversation or CW or FT8 or, you know, whatever. We just want to select this, this conversation. Um, so that's our bandwidth here. So we're going to have to shift this into the pass band to make sure our filter is going to select only that that signal coming through, right? So what could happen here? Well, sideband inversion. If you do the opposite sideband here, coming out the mixer, then all of a sudden you've got lower sideband here, or you may have shifted it the wrong way. You may have shifted it thinking it's uh, upper sideband, but it's actually lower sideband coming out, and you're supposed to shift this signal the opposite way. So that's, that's the first thing. So you have to know whether this mixer is going to do sideband inversion. If it's going to do sideband inversion, the LO is higher than RF and you're doing a subtraction, then you're going to want to make sure your bandwidth filter is, is filtering the opposite because it's going to invert what's, what's coming in here. Similar fashion with the, uh, well, this is kind of, I guess, uh, re re repeating it. So we've got upper sideband coming in, uh, you know, and we've got lower sideband. So now we have to shift this, instead of this shifting it up into this pass band, we have to sh shift it down. So the uh, lower sideband comes in the pass band of your filter. Now, keep in mind, remember I said lower sideband, upper sideband is exactly the same. There's no difference, they're just a mirror image of one another. The conversation, the spectrum in there is exactly the same. It's So it doesn't matter if it's upper sideband or lower sideband, it's still the same. It just, you have to know how you're gonna deal with it, how you're gonna basically decode it. So now if you're, if this mixer here has done a sideband inversion, so you've got upper sideband, coming in here, it's lower sideband, you're feeding through this mixer, your BFO now, you have to introduce the BFO on the right side of it. For lower sideband, your, your BFO will be below the low frequency component here, right? It's gonna be on the low side of it. But for lower sideband, this has to be now on the higher side because the, again, the this is kind of replacing the carrier the carrier has to be close to the low frequency side, right? So if you put the BFO on the wrong side, if you put the BFO on, on this side here, thinking it's upper sideband, you're just going to get gibberish. You're not going to hear anything. It'd just be gibberish coming out. So you got to make sure 
that you put your BFO on the correct side if the first mixer is doing side band inversion. So that's it. We're all done.